The fall of crude oil prices have inevitably reduced the foreign exchange earnings. Therefore, there is a need for Nigeria to focus on non-oil exports as a way to boost the economy. Need to increase the country's non-oil export marketability is our focus today on Business Nigeria. Welcome, I am Tolu Lokbe Ogunjobi. Now first, let's tell you an update on the decision of the Central Bank's Monetary Policy Committee meeting. The committee has left the benchmark interest rate unchanged at 14% for the fourth consecutive meeting to balance lifting uh, the economy out of its worst slump in 25 years with fighting inflation. Nine of ten MPC members voted to keep borrowing costs unchanged and one favoured increasing the rate. According to the central bank governor, Godin Imefele, the slowdown in inflation rate in February was partly due to base effects. The government said increased uh, production of crude oil will help stabilize the foreign exchange rate and provide more funds to actually stimulate the economy. The central bank has regularly uh, sold dollars to keep the naira between 305 and 320 against the greenback over the past four months. The Monetary Policy Committee has left the rates unchanged, just as a policy analyst Ayo Yalo was speculated, uh, also in line with market expectations. It's likely not to change any of the figures. Because what we are seeing right now are baby steps, like I said, they are good things, we are happy. I, CBN will want to watch maybe for another month. So they might likely want to leave it as it were for maybe another extra month to check and see, I mean, they want to achieve stability themselves. I think they should just maintain the stability and the equilibrium, wait, watch, and then act later on. Don't rush into it, then you have to rush out again. Now to our focus for the day. The development of any economy is to a large extent tied to the growth of exportation, and exportation boosts the economy and, of course, creates jobs. It also increases the standards of living of citizens. For a very long time, Nigeria focused on exporting crude oil, forgetting that we are a country blessed with so many other cash crops and minerals that could be exported. This brought about the realization and the need for diversification of Nigeria's export portfolio in order to sustain any uh, and grow the economy. This brought about the establishment of a government agency, the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, to help to develop strategies, programs and policies that would increase exports of non-oil uh, export products across the country and outside the country. Now, the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, in collaboration with the Japan External Trade Organization, says proper packaging of agricultural products will help boost Nigeria's presence in the global market. Well, this was disclosed at an opening of a seminar on packaging technology in Lagos. We have details in this report. The Nigerian government has moved to fast track the diversification of our economy away from crude oil. Part of the area of focus is the agricultural sector, which according to many can be a source of revenue generation for the government. It is against this backdrop that the Nigerian Export Promotion Council Partnering with the Japan External Trade Organization organized this forum to help increase the marketability of the country's agricultural products. It's very important on this uh, uh, seminar on logistical packaging, you know, to tell the, the farmers and the SMEs, MSMEs, how to go about when they start a business and they want to go into the export trade. Uh, it's, it's a very delicate and very technical uh, uh, business is to know how to package your goods properly is to know how your goods can hit the shelves in Tesco's in Walmart in, in stores all over the world and compete favorably with other uh, goods from other countries reports show that more than 40 percent of fresh fruits and vegetables produced are wasted as a result of poor packaging handling and preservation Managing Director of Japan External Trade Organization in Lagos says this ugly trend will be addressed at the end of this seminar. The government and also the, the associations, most public and the private sector, have to uh, do more to encourage 
those uh, private entrepreneurship. There are uh, many things to do. This, the, the training, a kind of packaging training is only just one thing. Also finance is also very important, encouraging the, the, the Bank of Agriculture, Bank of Industry to, to uh, give their financial schemes for the entrepreneur. Aside from packaging, funding is also a major challenge. On access to, to finance, that's what government is taking really seriously. And there are very many kind of interventions they're trying to do. Now, under the Nigerian Economic uh, Recovery and Growth Plan, uh, you're going to see many interventions like that that government is coming up with. Uh, the idea is to really have a single digit uh, of financing uh, for, for, for farming. The post harvest farmers, processors, manufacturers, Potential exporters and operators of small and medium scale enterprises here agree that this gathering will help reduce post harvest losses, revenue losses, and poor quality produce. It is worthy of note that the Nigerian Export Promotion Council has announced plans to increase the nation's non oil export marketability through enhanced skill in, uh, skills in global standards and packaging, therefore, reducing post harvest losses arising from inefficient packaging storage and preservation systems. With me in the studio is the Chief Executive Officer, Nigerian Export Promotion Council, Olusegun Awolowo. Thank you very much for joining us on the show. No, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Let me start this way. Can you tell us more of how the Council is, what they're doing to effectively play its role in improving exports um, at this time, goods and commodities? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, from your intro, let me just clarify and say uh, the the NDPC is not a new organization. Yeah, it was yeah, actually course. created in 1976 alongside with the NMPC. And the idea then, uh, what our founding uh, leaders had in mind was that don't rely on one product. Uh, create another agency to drive uh, other products. Uh, but of course, the reverse was exactly the case. The case. Uh, Nigeria just stayed on, on, on crude oil, on crude oil exports. And even in the in the crude oil, we failed again to uh, uh, to, to get into the petrochemical uh, uh, market uh, as a petrol economy, so we can uh, produce and export uh, uh, petroleum products. So that that is the bane, and that's what has happened really to our economy, and that's why we're in a recession. Uh, apart from other or other causes, really, the main cause is we don't have foreign exchange. How do you get foreign exchange? You must export. And when you look at our figures, in 2014, Nigeria earned $70 billion uh, from uh, crude oil exports. So we had $70 billion to spend. 2015, it reduced drastically to $50 billion. So you are looking at a loss of $30 billion. Meanwhile, your import bill hovers around $50 billion. And that's the challenge. 2016, now we're looking at the figures. I'm trying to compute it. I had from uh, Dr. Yemi Kale just um, uh, a few minutes ago. The figure is 6.9 trillion Naira, Nigerian from uh, crude oil. But you have to look at the rate of exchange to calculate that uh, hovering between 197 to 305. So you are looking less, obviously, less than 50 uh, billion dollars. So it's about, let's say, give or take $40 billion Nigeria and, and still having an import bill of about $50 billion. So you see the problem really is the shortage of foreign exchange. That's what is causing the whole problem we, we have on now, that we have a recession. So what the country needs to do really is to export, to develop more things to export, both under the petrol uh, the, the crude oil sector and other sectors we have and develop new products so we can increase our uh, export earnings. Uh, the challenge in the economy is, uh, I keep saying, it's not really about the demand for foreign exchange, uh, which is what we be more focused on. It's actually the supply of the foreign exchange that is the challenge. And when you look at the supply of foreign exchange, ways to do it one borrowing which is not very good you don't want to increase debt profile uh fdi foreign direct investment most of the time they are non-stickly 
uh, because they, they move around when there's likely to be a problem, they're calling for that investment. They look at diaspora earnings, uh, diaspora income coming in. That is also based on the needs of the family back here. You're sending money to Nigeria to build a house for your brother. Once the house is built, you're not sending any more. Look at that. But I say the most vibrant and the most sustainable way is exports. Is when you are exporting and you're earning foreign exchange from your exports, then you 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 can succeed. Indeed, there has been lots of trainings, you know, organized mm -hmm. packaging, documentation, mm -hmm. and all of that to help improve this. Yeah. Um, uh, how effective would you say the NEPC has actually worked to uh, contribute to economic growth in all our sector? Uh, we, I think, it, it's going to be the uh, pivotal uh, agency in the coming years, really, to 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 feed in, into this diversification of our economy. And uh, we, the, the government has come up with a new Nigerian uh, economic uh, uh, recovery and growth plan, and the 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 NEPC is featured uh, prominently in that. We have uh, what we have is the zero oil plan. That we are pushing to the to the to the country, and let me just say what that is is really about. President Buhari said it uh, when he made the Manufacturers Association, and he said, "Look, we need to start behaving as if we have no oil at all." And that's the challenge the NEPC took when we developed the zero oil plan. The whole idea is that look, let us look at other sectors. One, the question is, if Nigeria had no oil. Is that the end of the country? And we say an emphatic no, because we have other products uh, that we can also use. So we developed 11 sectors, and we're calling for increased productivity, uh, which we did to the likes we've never achieved before in this country. So we look at increased productivity all across those sectors and in, uh, in, to increase the productivity uh, capacity of Nigerians, thereby you are creating jobs. Uh, we look at these sectors, we have a category A and category B sectors. In the category A sectors, we are looking at petrochemicals and methanol, soya beans, sugar, cotton and yarn, nitrogenous uh, fertilizer and ammonia, palm oil, rice, rubber, hides and leather, cocoa and gold. And look, traditionally, you know, people are in this, uh, say, oh, we always had these products, so what has happened to them? I'll tell you what has happened. You have not increased your product production in all these areas. Now, we look at these sectors. These are trading above $20 billion each in the, in, in the global market. When you look at petrochemicals and methanol, which is the biggest shame for our country, petrochemicals and methanol is trading $150 billion. Nigeria is not there. Why? Because we're importing. Yet we're a petrol economy. We don't have the refineries to boost production. So we're calling uh, for that. And uh, there is really uh, success going. You have the uh, Aliko Dangote refinery coming up, Lagos, which will help a lot uh, and, and to do that. You have the uh, Indorama petrochemical plant uh, in, in, in River State. Uh, we need to replicate that all across the country. We need to have more of those. Also, some mod modular refineries as well, so we can use that, capture the African market and then the African market in petroleum products. Uh, cocoa is another uh, uh, sad one. Uh, right now, our production is about 250,000 metric tons. Uh, Ghana is going to 900,000. Ivory Coast, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, is almost 2 million metric tons. So we're not even a key player. In, in, in terms of that, but even with that, we're number four in the world. But let us increase uh, productivity. We need to grow more trees. We need to increase the yield on our on our, on our, on our crops, and that's what's happening real under the agri uh, 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 transformation uh, program and the the new one uh, based on that launched recently by the Minister of Agri. So there is going to be there is a big call to increase productivity in all these sectors. Then you also have the category B uh, uh, sectors, which we have, we have banana, plantain, cashew, uh, cassava, cement and clinkers, cowpea, ginger, uh, oranges, sesame, shea butter, spices, and tomato. 
and I don't need to elaborate on what you see in wastage of uh, tomato lacrosse. When we're not producing, we should be doing tomato paste. We should have company like Heinz setting up here, doing ketchup and everything because of our, uh, our, our huge volumes of uh, tomato we have. So all across board, these are all the products that we think, you see, Nigeria should concentrate on. And then we can lift ourselves after of this uh, uh, research. Indeed, that, that's in line with the diversification agenda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, exporters majorly the issue is um, funding, mm -hmm. infrastructure, and some of all of mm -hmm. all of this. Mm -hmm. I would like you to to shed more light. How do you intend to also help address some of this? Uh, yes, we we are, we are calling the zero oil plan is really calling for uh, increased. Uh, uh, production and productive capacity so thereby you're looking at investment brought uh, uh, particularly in the private sector uh, to come in and we show them what is possible outside you know how you can earn dollars outside so we're calling them bring all those naira the mattress the one you have under your mattress the one you didn't put in the bank the one you've just stored in the bank and in interest come and put it in these kinds of businesses that will generate uh, uh, more income uh, for you. So, but on government side, government is, uh, is, is looking at it and uh, uh, the first is to reduce um, uh, the, the rate, you know, and uh, you're looking at single digit uh, rate for financing all across the sector for manufacturing, for industry, and particularly for farming. Uh, if you don't bring that down, you, you're still going to have a problem. And government has just set off the new board is ready on the Bank of Agri. Uh, uh, BOI is also going to be uh, uh, funded uh, for this. So you can have those low interest uh, uh, rates that you can borrow money to attract uh, investment. So that is good because you can compete with other countries when they, their own rates are single digits and you are 20 something and you want to drive farming. No, you cannot. Uh, you, you cannot even borrow money to do cocaine with that to make money. Yeah. So you, you need to do that. Government is seriously working on it, uh, bringing it down single digits. In fact, the Minister of Agri was calling for less than 5%. Great. Yeah, for, for this. And that is what has to happen. Now, when you look at the national uh, the economy uh, recovery and growth plan, this is, this is captured there. That's the way government wants to do it. And government is really looking at that. At the back of our growth, it has to be export, export driven. Yeah. Uh, we, we need to run for an exchange. In, indeed, we have to go on a short break. Now, we'll go on this break now, and I'll still be having the CEO with me here of the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, giving insights into issues surrounding non-oil exports. Please stay with us on Business Nigeria. Thank you for staying tuned. You're watching Business Nigeria. Well, we're looking at the non-oil exports, improving non-oil exports in the country. And I have with me the Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, Olusegun Awolowo, who's been giving insights into these issues. Now, uh, while we went on that break, something just came to my mind. The fashion industry. Yeah. I remember that a lot has been said about that, trying to also improve uh, our fashion mm -hmm. industry. I know we have lots of cuttings, uh, textile industry. I know there's been lots of challenges too with that. Yeah. In, in all of that, mm. what, where does NMP, NEPC come in? Yeah, well, we are the we are the tail end of it. And it, the idea we we export, we export it. We we tell you the markets okay. available. And uh, but like I said, all the, you know, we we really need uh, the sectoral policies of various uh, ministries to set clear targets on this production output and work towards getting them. Uh, you, if you go along uh, the, the north and you see all our textile indust uh, industries lying com uh, comatose, it, it's really sad. And you know, you have now state governments, you know, everybody getting around, look, to try and uh, bring that back to life. Uh, we need to uh, start producing uh, our textiles again. We need to resuscitate all these companies so we can raise production to where we used to be and in fact higher than that. 
And then there's the market. Of course, there's a market out there for us. The fashion industry is a two trillion uh, dollar market uh, that we're not tapping into. We need to develop more brands. We need to really get into the high end of the fashion in industry. And uh, the, the prospects are there uh, when you go to, when you look at, uh, uh, I'm, I'm really happy now that the whole country is really, uh, you know, jumping on the bandwagon of the Made in Nigeria, yeah, yeah. Made in Nigeria, where Made in Nigeria, use Made in Nigeria, eat Made in Nigeria, and all that. So all it's about is to increase production so we can reduce uh, our craving for, for in importation. Indeed, if it's available here, why would you import it? Uh, so the, the fashion industry is, is big. We're uh, uh, exposing our uh, fashion people to shows, uh, different shows abroad. Uh, we started targeting only specifically buyers fairs now, which is where the buyers for all these uh, uh, fashion things, where they go. So we are in the business matchmaking. We take our designers out there, and many of them are making headway, you know, uh, uh, all across all across uh, Europe and America. They they, they 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 like the Nigerian fashion. They like what we're doing with it, and so that that that's good uh, for us. Uh, we need to really do more. In Aba, for example, you know, the the Made in Aba initiative that this present governor. Is uh, pushing. It's 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 fantastic, you know. And I always tell people, look, Aba is that's the industry is an industrial park ready to happen. Uh, over sixty thousand uh, tailors, over eighty thousand people doing uh, l l leather uh, apparel, shoes, sleep as uh, bags, everything. So that's that's big for Nigeria. But we need to create brands to go along with that that we can take abroad. Mm -hmm. to, to expose and sell. Uh, as, as a roundup, I like one word for exporters. They've identified lots of challenges. Some of them even came to my Facebook page mm -hmm. and asked questions for you. Yeah. But they've, they've talked about their challenges. What's yeah. your message to them at this time? Exporters, potential exporters, what, should, what do they need to do? They need to know the trade. That is very important. And we are rolling across all the country, what we call a zero to export uh, training program. Uh, it runs about eight weeks. You need to know the rudiments, the specific things to do in export, particularly on documentation, you know, and you need to know which countries you target. You need to know at a particular time which goods are being sold. And uh, if you don't get yourself properly, uh, and it, it's not just, we're not really, in the NEPC, we're not looking out really for suitcase exporters. Mm. We're looking for the big ones, the transport, the sustainable, the ones that will stay the, the period, the course of time, and get into the export business. Uh, even if it's only 10, I tell you, if it's only 10 people we have in Nigeria that are serious and ready for this, we will, we will, we will meet our, our figures. But we tell them, don't learn the rudiments first. Yeah, don't get bond. We had some people that got bond by taking uh, a biscuit flour to Mexico, lost 40 uh, uh, containers. Why? Because their, their documents were, were false. They were falsified by a, a fraudulent clearing and forwarding agency. You know, so you come, come to us, let's take you through the proper process. Uh, are, your goods are being rejected. Why? Some, it's plainly on documentation. You know, so come to us, come properly to us. Let's, let's take you through. We have six regional offices where now we now have 15 smart offices all over the country we are at, aiming to have a smart office in every state capital so we can assist you know you come to us online also for questions and answers let us put you through properly uh, so you don't get your fingers burnt because once you you get many people they get their fingers burnt they don't want to go back into yeah. it but at the same time people that don't get their fingers burnt they're making serious money I was asking an exporter the other day, he does uh, 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 ginger, cashew, uh, cocoa, etc. And I said, oh, he said, oh, you know, uh, ED 2016 was not a very good year for me. Uh, I only made $18 million. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and that was not a good year. Yeah. So there's money to be made in export. Yeah, yeah. But come, do it properly. Come through the process. 
uh, and let's let's put you through. All right, the Chief Executive Officer, now Joint Export Promotion Council, Olusegun Awolamos. Thank you for your time on Business Nigeria today. Thank you very today. much for having me. I know you can go on and on. Yes, I can. I need more time. <laughs> Thank you. Well, this is where we wrap it up today on the show, Business Nigeria. We hope you join us another time for more insightful business analysis. I am Tolu Lokwe Ogunjobi. On behalf of the entire production crew, thank you for watching. I'll leave you with the figures of the exchange rates as it stands today.